because I had Hodgkin's lymphoma, I was having a cough. I mean, I was just coughing a lot. It wouldn't stop, you know. You know, it was, I mean, it probably started at the end of April, so I just thought it was allergies. I was 31, which, you know, being in the cancer ward and being the youngest guy there was a little weird. Um, the thing about Dr. Lemon is that he's, no matter what's going on, he's calm as a Hindu cow. I mean, you, he doesn't, doesn't get you scared. He just says, okay, this is what you have. This is what we're going to do. He's very confident in it. We decided Dr. Lemon was the one that helped us in the hospital. And, you know, of course, he always says, you know, you can go to whoever you want. You can get a second opinion. But the way Dr. Lemon is, he's very confident. He's very calm. He calms you down. He never, he never makes it seem like it's that big of a deal. I got through it because my, my wife and kids and my family helped me get through it. I mean, you have your family. They, they're there to support you. They love you. They, they try to help you, but they're not going through it. You, you know, one of the things I, I've always said is when you're in that room getting chemotherapy, you're in a room full of people that all have one thing in common. And you talk about it, and it's, it's therapy. I mean, if people don't understand that, you know, I remember being in there my first time and being scared and people would joke and talk with me and, you know, they really, really helped. And then you do the same for the next person that comes in that's never done it before. So those people in that room become really close to you in a short period of time because you get to talk. I've known my wife since I was in seventh grade. We met in junior high. She probably worked twice as hard while I was sick because I couldn't do, you know, she had to go to work. She had to take care of the kids. I mean, I could do stuff with the kids, but there's stuff you just, you know, you're not supposed to do or can't do. She took on a lot of everything until I was better. And, I mean, that's the one thing you gotta realize is you gotta make sure you say please and you gotta make sure you say thank you. You gotta make sure you know you care that you care and that you know she's they're doing a lot you can't just be like well i'm sick you know you're not the only one going through it there will be fights there will be bad times but there's good times too i mean you have to you have to realize it's the same person you still love or care for and that it's just a hard situation i'm cancer free um we've moved to I mean, I think we moved every four months instead of every two, so it's it's progressing like it should. Nothing's come back. I mean, I'm still dealing with little things that you didn't have before cancer, you know, that you got to deal with now. But he told me it takes a while to get back to normal, and you might not ever be exactly the same, which is okay. You know, I'm still alive. You know, there's that. Sometimes you'll be great, your energy will be great, you'll build, you feel like you've built back up your energy and then all of a sudden you'll hit your wall. And you just gotta remember that that's part of it. No matter how far out you think you are and that, man, I should be better, you gotta remember that, you know, we poisoned my body for a better part of a year. <laughs> so, it's, it just takes time and people gotta remember that. Cause that's the most frustrating, like, you wanna go do something and your body still won't let you and you're like, well, why can't I do this? You just gotta be patient.